Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own plant tray holder. So this is a regular black plastic flat that uh, little seedlings come in at like garden centers. Um, I buy these sometimes. I also get them from friends, from family. Um, you know, I'll take these whenever I can because they're really convenient to hold all your seedlings and move plants around. Like if I want to go plant stuff in the garden, you just pick one of these up and go. The only problem is they're very flimsy. As the sun beats down on the plastic, it weakens the material. That combined with the physical strain of picking them up uh, frequently will cause cracks and tears. And I'm lucky to get two years out of these. Um, you know, when you load them up with seedlings or have it uneven, it just happens faster. And as soon as they tear, it's just a matter of time before the thing's gonna have to go in the trash or recycle. Um, so anyways, me being a frugal guy, I wanted to come up with a solution and I did. This is my little design for a plant tray holder. It's made out of three pieces of wood, a one by four furring strip, um, two different sized dowels, and um, I did put a little finish of linseed oil on there, but it's very easy to build. Um, it's lightweight, the thing only weighs like an ounce or two. You can basically take a tray and set it right inside here and it will be basically fully captured. Um, to the point where it's not going to fall out even if you tip it like 45 degrees. Now, I have a dog bone design on the side so your fingers can slide right under there and it's easy to pick up. But as you can see, that plastic's not moving at all. There's no flex in it. So it should extend the life of these little plastic flats by a lot. Um, and you can see right there, it's like 45 degrees. It's not going anywhere. Um, this thing also looks pretty nice too. If you're going to leave something out on somewhere where people can see it, um, if you have one of your black plastic trays in one of these, it doesn't look so ugly. Um, but these make a great gift. This one actually that you're seeing was actually a gift for my mom. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna take you step-by-step step how to build it. Also at our website, which I'll link to below, there's an article with step-by-step step with the free plan. So let's go have a look. Okay, so for tools, we're gonna wanna have a tape measure a crosscut saw like that Japanese one there or a Western style crosscut saw here. Either one will work fine as long as it's sharp and can cut. Um, you're going to want to have a speed square or a combination square handy um, just for marking stuff out. Some kind of drill and a couple of bits. A coping saw which if you're unfamiliar with those they're very inexpensive at Lowe's or Home Depot like ten dollars I think at most. Um, and then uh, if you have a jigsaw that would make this job a lot easier. Um, but if you don't, that's okay. I, I didn't use mine. I used the coping saw for this video and actually just to build these in general. Um, for materials, we're going to need a furring strip, a one by four furring strip. They sell them at Lowe's and Home Depot in eight foot lengths. They'll cut them in half for you to fit them in your car if you need to. You're also going to need a couple of dowels. Um, I've got a half inch and a three eighths inch dowel there, both 48 inches long, which is the perfect size for this project. Now, really what we're going to be doing here is just the first thing is just cutting two one foot planks of the furring strip. And that's all we're gonna use of the furring strip actually. Um, so that's kind of cool. But uh, anyways, if you have a vise on hand, that'll make this job a lot easier. If not, you just gonna have to put your knee on it and deal with it or use clamps or something. But my advice is to find someone with a vise. And if you don't have one of these saws, these Japanese pole saws are excellent. They're one side's a rip cut, the other side's a cross cut. So they make quick work of everything. Now, our plant trays are not normal shapes. They're tapered on the sides, they have grooves on the bottom, and then they have that thin lip on the outside at the top. And we have to design around all of that. But the good news for you is I've done it for you. Um, at our website, which there'll be a link down below uh, to the article, there's gonna be uh, some plans on that article, a PDF that you can print out. Now, I couldn't, um, you know do the whole thing on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper but i did two halves and i have the dimensions there but it's to scale so you should be able to print it out cut it out and put it on your board and just trace with a knife or something where you need to cut and where you need to put your holes so that's pretty easy for you now once we've cut our two one foot planks though we're gonna and marked out our boards um we're just gonna come in and cut the groove so take your crosscut saw put it at a 45 degree angle um, eyeball it as best you can and cut. Um, you know, this is a uh, another reason why you want to have a vice available um, from someone, a neighbor, a friend, if you don't have one. But uh, just cut down to your uh, the depth line, and then we're going to get our coping saw. 
Um, and this is where the jigsaw would come in handy if you had one. But a coping saw allows you to make, it, it, coat, it cuts on either the push or the pull stroke depending on how you put the blade in. But it'll make uh, tight bends and you can cut horizontally like I'm doing here and pop out the grooves for your fingers. Now, it took me like two minutes in real time to do this. Um, and that's mainly because I stacked my boards, you know, side by side. So it's just a lot more material that I have to remove. Um, okay, so after we've done the first one, we're going to flip it around in the vise and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Um, having a speed square is obviously handy for keeping your lines straight and all that. But just get in there with a the coping saw and uh, cut right through the stuff. Um, these little hand holds are... Uh, pretty nice actually for picking up everything it just makes everything easy after that chuck up the drill and start drilling holes you got four holes to drill two half inch two three eighths um, if you clamp a backing board to behind everything then it will prevent tear out as well finally take a uh, rasp or a file or sandpaper and just round the corner the more time you spend on this you'll the better because you don't want sharp edges um, you're going to be picking this thing up all the time and uh you know, you don't want to cut yourself or poke yourself. Um, all right, now, as far as applying a finish, I am applying boiled linseed oil. Um, it's just some old stuff I had down in my basement from my previous owner of the house, actually. But it'll provide a degree of protection, um, so it's kind of nice in that regard. If you wanted to paint it, you could do so, and but you'd want to assemble it first. Um, just because the paint's going to change the dimensions of your holes, whereas linseed oil is just going to get absorbed by the wood. But, um, you know, some kind of finish is a good idea to protect it. You could even just use deck sealer if you had that lying around. Um, it's just going to protect it from water and such. Um, you should be able to put this together by hand. It might be a snug fit for the dowels, but uh, once you get the bottom in, put the top one on, carefully line them up, and then you can see what I'm doing here. Just kind of gently smack it, basically, to... Uh, get them on there so they're flush and now your plant tray holder is basically done i've never glued mine because i just felt it wasn't necessary it's it's a tight enough fit because the dowels are never going to be perfectly straight um and uh now you're ready to go you've made your own little plant tray holder but uh like i said this is a nice little project it doesn't take too long it's very functional um and handy to have around like i really like using it to move vegetables and flowers around to my garden so on and so forth it looks nice and it would make a great gift for somebody if you are that, you know, inclined to do so. But uh, again, the plans are free at our website as a PDF. You can just go get them. Um, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Thank you very much.